Willkommen zu Ecolinguist. Heute spreche ich auf Englisch mit Fernando und Eric, die Theodisch sprechen, uh, und Moritz, die Theodisch und Frisch sprechen. Uh, I myself am a native English speaker. Uh, I understand a little bit of German, but I don't expect to understand very much um, in this video. And I have uh, a YouTube channel where I discuss topics about historical stages of English. And would everybody else like to introduce themselves as well? Hi, um, ich bin Fernando. Ich komme aus dem wunderschönen Allgäu und studiere gerade pharmazeutische Bioprozesstechnik in München. Uh, moin, ich bin Moritz. Um, ich bin auch von Tützklön, aber ich snage auch Friesk in Tütsk. Tützk ist mein Modersprog. Und ich snage uh, manning uh, Ullersprog, um, germanisches Prog. Und ich studiere Sprogwissenschaften an der Universität in Kiel. Moin, ich bin Erik, ich komme aus Hamburg in Norddeutschland und ich spreche Deutsch und Englisch. Um, first of all, we're going to go through um, three different words in Old English. I'm going to present three clues. Um, I'm not going to tell you the word. And from the clues, you have to work out what the word is and you can respond in your own languages. Um, and then afterwards, we'll have a bit of discussion in English, if that's okay, because my, my German is not that good. Um, so the first word, he won us on Walde, he hath cloa on his fortum, he rarath kludliche. Let me know if you'd like me to repeat anything. Yes, please. Repeat the clues, okay. He won us on Walde, he hath cloa on his fortum. Can you maybe repeat the last sentence once? Herarath Hludliche. Let me know when you're all ready and then we can maybe send them all at the same same time. If that, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Send to chat. Okay. So Fernando, you yes. So what I understood, it was in German, er wohnt im Wald und er hat Clown an den Pfoten. That is what, uh, what it sounded like to me in the first two sentences. So I was not really um, sure which animal, but around here we only have wolves left. So I put wolves, uh, but also could have been a bear, for example. Okay, that's very good. Eric? I don't actually know what that means. Lux. Uh, Lux is, I think, links, links in English. Ah, okay, okay. Um, I also understood a wound in Wald or something like that, and um, has claws on his front legs or something. Er hat irgendwie um, Krallen auf seinen Vorderbeinen, habe ich verstanden. Den dritten Satz habe ich gar nicht verstanden. Da hatte ich überhaupt keine Idee und ja, das einzige Tier, was mir irgendwie spontan mit Krallen einfiel, war irgendwie Lux. Ich weiß auch nicht, wieso. Ähm, ich weiß gar nicht, ob die wirklich in Deutschland oder England leben, aber ja, das fiel mir so ein. The, the third sentence was actually the one I was expecting people to have difficulty with, because I'm not sure if they're, um, I'm not sure if the words have um, German cognates. Um, but more it's, ja. sorry. I... Yes, um, I didn't understand the last sentence at all. <laughs> Um, but I uh, thought the first one was with an animal living in the wild. So my association wasn't directly to the forest, but more like in general. And I thought about Old English in a more medieval setting. And I thought about heraldics. And yeah, so my um, my guess is the lion, which would be der Löwe in German and der Löwe in Frisian. But I think it The things that I understand were very broad, so it could have been a bear, a wolf, um, yeah. Well, actually, I now realize that I didn't make the clues specific enough because uh, all, all of the answers actually are, are correct based on the clues. What I was going for was better, which is bear, um, mm -hmm. and that's cognate with German bear, and um, I'm not sure what the Frisian word for that would be. Um, Probably something similar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, but cool. Written um, very differently. That was I. 
the only um, response I understood most of was um, Eric's, and you got the first two cl clues basically exactly right. I think Fernando did as well, although I didn't quite catch the second one, but it sounded like you got you got it right. Mm -hmm. So you identified that um, Wunath is is a conjugated form of Wunyan, and that is cognate with German Wunen, um, and Wald mm -hmm. is cognate with German Wald. Um, and as I said, Rarian, uh, which which is the um, the word Raroth, that that's the ancestor of the English word raw, as in like the bear roars. Um, I, I wasn't sure if there was a German cognate of that word um, or a Frisian cognate of that word, so I was expecting people to maybe have issues with that sentence. But then the Hlud in Hludliche is the ancestor of the modern English word loud. So that sentence means it roars loudly. So very, very well done. Interesting. I think there um, may be a cognate, but I'm not really sure. Um, there is a word for the sound that deers make uh, okay. in German, Röhren. Um, I also very, okay. yeah, it's very specific to that animal. So I'm not, I'm not sure if there is a possibility of a cognate. I could imagine that being that that being cognate. I feel like that that level of semantic drift is pretty um, believable. But yeah, I'll have to look that up afterwards. But I'm glad we found something. But I can well, I can understand why you interpreted Wilder as being um, wild as well. So the clues for word number two are he is swart of the rauda, he is suete, he is mid monigum baum yemakut. So again, he is swart of the rauda, he is suete, he is mid monigum baum yemakut. Can you repeat the first sentence? He is swart of the rauda. Mm -hmm. can, can you repeat the second one? <laughs> he, he is suete. I'll do the third as well. He is mit manigum baulum yamakut. Has everyone got something they can put in the chat whenever people are ready? And hmm, okay, that's interesting. So, Fernando, what's your answer? Uh, yeah, my answer is uh, generally because I don't know a specific answer. Something man-made. I, I got something black, schwarz, like schwarz in German, and in the end, something like. Uh, Manifaltig, uh, uh, as it would be from many things. Okay, and Moritz. Yes, uh, I went in a different <laughs> direction. Um, I also heard uh, uh, "swart" um, or in Frisian uh, "swart," um, uh, which means black. And I thought it could be licorice because it was something made, and I. Th thought I heard the word boom or something like that. That would be the Frisian word, which means tree and um, li licorice being made out of plants. Um, I thought that may be a possibility. Yeah. So the um, the German word would be uh, Lakritz, uh, das Lakritz, and uh, the Frisian word would be the drop. Okay. And Eric? Yeah, my guess is pretty wild because I didn't really get the all the information, my guess was gusseisen, which would be cast iron in English. Um, I only got that it is schwarz, so black. Um, Swete, I don't, I didn't know what that uh, could possibly mean. And manich and gemarkt, um, yeah, I thought it's something man-made, as Fernando said. Uh, manich is a, I know it's a low German word, which means many or fear. So that's why I f figured it's made of lots of stuff, but I didn't really know what it could possibly be, to be honest. Um, so nobody got the actual thing that close. So it was Bramil, which is a blackberry um, in German. Hang on. I think it's Brombeere. Brombeere. Ah, Brombeere. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so you absolutely right. Everyone got Swart, which is cognate with German Schwarz. Rauda is cognate with German Rot. So it's, it can be black or red, like depending on the season. Um, nice. Su- Suete is the ancestor of the modern English word sweet. And it's actually cognate with the German word Zeus, um, but it doesn't sound much like it. So I didn't think people would um, cotton on to that. And you're absolutely right about the low low German word. I didn't I didn't realize there was a cognate, um, but uh, Monigum is the ancestor of the modern English word many, or money is the ancestor of the modern English word. Um, Baulum is um, related to the modern English word ball. So uh, that would be Baul in the... Um, nominative singular and as you said eric you muckled well as i think all of you got your muckled is gemacht in german so you have this ge prefix in old english this yeah which in german we pronounce g i don't know how it would, how it would be in frisian um, and that that functioned in a very similar way to how it does in modern german so it formed past participles um, and things like that yeah in so, uh, frisian that the um this uh, just was dropped like in modern English. So oh, okay. uh, uh, suffix doesn't doesn't exist. Um, yeah, that's inter- interesting because manning uh, is also many or a lot of things in, uh, in Frisian. So okay. maybe I got um, inspiration from there. Okay. Okay. I didn't realize that word had, oh, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that, that um, that word has cognates in other West Germanic languages. Um, the the last sentence, just in case any old English people are watching, I hope that that sentence construction is um, okay. I, I couldn't, I couldn't think of any similar sentence construction in any text, so I, I just sort of came up with something that seemed plausible. Um, but um, maybe someone can come up with something that, with reference to an actual text. But hopefully that construction is okay. But yeah, um, I think people did very well with the sentences there, um, even though people didn't get the final, the final word. I'm hoping the the last one will be a bit easier. So the the clues are Hu Marton Seon, Hu Belth Twa, Hu Marton Brun Grene of the Blau Beon. Let me know if you need any repetitions. Can you repeat uh, the sentences again? Okay. He marton seon. He belth twa. He marton brun grene of the blau beon. Hmm. Can you repeat the second sentence? He belth twa. Are people getting on the right? <laughs> Mm-hmm. So the words that I got, I, I got uh, don't make uh, much sense, but let's try. <laughs> okay. I think I understood a lot of it, but I still am having problem with <laughs> coming up what exactly um, is a search. So, yeah. Okay. I think I only got the last sentence. Okay. Send the chat if you're ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Fernando, what's your guess? Um, my guess was uh, siren, sirene, or an instrument, instrument, uh, because the first thing that I took up was uh, that it makes a sound somehow. But also, then uh, I heard some colors like brown, green, and blue. But yeah, something that makes sound and comes in plentiful colors. Maybe an uh, instrument or something. Okay. Moritz? Yes. Um, I, I understood the first sentence um, that something is sewn. Um, so I thought of a textile in any uh, shape or form. And um, I thought that he, um, mm. the person needs two of them and that they are in uh, green, blue, or brown. So I thought maybe it's a glove or in German, Handschuh or in Frisian, Hohnsk. Yeah, that's my guess. Okay. And Eric? My guess is Natur, which is nature in English, um, just because of the last sentence um, where I understood brown, green, and blue, which are the most prominent colors in nature, I guess. 
um, apart from that, I only noticed that the first um, word changed. It wasn't he anymore, but you or something. And I didn't really know what that means. It threw me off a little bit. And I think in the first sentence, I heard something like um, machte or something, which would be it was made. But um, that's all I got. Okay. Um, people got the colors which I expected. So you pointed out, Eric, that the first word has changed, so the pronouns changed. Mm. The pronoun in the others was he, which is the masculine pronoun. It's the, um, the ancestor of the modern English word he. Um, whereas this one is he, which um, is not ancestral to any modern English word because it was replaced um, by the old Norse loan word they. Um, so mm -hmm. this this word is alge, which may be understandable as alge, oh. um, I in English. So the first sentence means they can see. So seon is cognate with the German word zeon. Um, Marton is actually um, ancestral to the modern English word might, uh, but the meaning has changed slightly to mo modern English. Um, the second sentence I was a bit cheeky with because I used a construction that, that doesn't really resemble the modern English or German one. So in German, um, you, you'd use es gibt, and in, in English, you'd use um, there are, like you'd say, there are two of them. And then the third sentence is, as, as people recognized, describing the colors so they can be brown, green, or blue. Um, I wondered if people would notice that uh, the word ozde as being related to the German word order. As in all, hmm. so like they can be brown, green, or blue. Um, oh, I realized I, think I didn't notice that. Okay. Okay. Um, but now that I see it written out, it actually like, makes a lot of sense uh, with it being yeah, I. It's, I do like. Mm -hmm. Like that, that it helps so much whenever I uh, saw uh, these kind of videos of, uh, on YouTube. I was way better in guessing because I saw, of course, the words. They helped so much. Uh, I think the Merton, or how it's pronounced, could uh, be Möchten, right, in German today. Yes, that's that's absolutely right, yeah. Oh, makes sense. Yeah. And I think I think the word Toi for two is closer to the Frisian than it is to the German. It sounds more similar to the Frisian, I believe. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong there. Um, yeah, um, there's a, a, that's a special case for North Frisian. There is, um, so the North Frisian word is Tau, uh, T-A-U. So there is uh, no more that, uh, that sound, but um, in other closely related languages, it's uh, the same. I think um, North Frisian has very strong Scandinavian influence, especially Danish. Okay. So that may be an influence from that side that we lost that sound. Okay, that's very interesting. I, this is like most of the cognate information I'm providing is from a German angle because I know embarrassingly little about Frisian. Um, and, and most of the resources are about West Frisian anyway, so I know basically nothing about the other Frisian languages. Um, so sorry about that. But I'm glad that you're here to provide, provide information. Hi there, it's Norbert here. Thanks for watching. There are more videos featuring Old English coming soon. But did you know that now you can join our Discord server? It's a free community for language nerds and geeks like you, where we can hang out in text channels and voice channels. There are voice channels dedicated to language exchange. There are voice channels dedicated to mutual intelligibility experiments. You can meet fellow language lovers and enthusiasts, and you can just hang out, play games, share funny language memes and just be part of the Ecolinguist community in a more direct way. So if you're interested, check it out. The link is in the description. See you there.